I call to order the special session of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, June 6, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call. Mayor Betty Giotis. Here. Vice Mayor Lund. Here. Commissioner Eisner. Here. Commissioner Kulias. Here. Commissioner Kulianis. Here. Okay, this evening is a special session. There aren't any public comments uh, on anything not on the agenda. We're gonna focus on what's on the agenda. This is actually um, the very first meeting of this type uh, where the residents approved a charter amendment to require a budget meeting at the very beginning of the process so they can weigh in on what the uh, what they believe the needs are. So um, we've got the agenda in front of us and I'm gonna turn the um, meeting over to our city manager for introductory comments. Thank you. As far as myself and the city staff, we are involved with budget from April through September. Um, that's when we start. So we've already had the budget um, working on it for two months. Um, you'll see in a presentation a very short one. Ron's going to give what the process is and when everybody gets involved in the process. And it's always the end of the process in September when there's two public hearings, and those public hearings are required by law. They're statutorily mandated is where the public talks. The purpose of the charter item you see up on the board, the charter that was passed last year was to put a public hearing for the public to get input into the budget before um, the major part of the process began. And 88% of the 2,700 voters voted for this. So that's why we're having this meeting tonight and this meeting is mostly about you um, after these short presentations. The charter mandated this meeting, but we wanted to, we knew the flavor of this commission um, for more public involvement. So in addition to what the charter required, um, we've got an additional source of information that the public has already begun the process of talking about the budget. And this is using our Connect Tarpon Springs that we've used for several things in the past. We'll be getting out again, we, we got this out about two weeks ago the commissioners on their dais have a sheet of the responses from the public, about 35 responses already, good responses. So the public has got to jump on tonight and this will be up through our budget process of June, through when the commissioners are working with staff on July and August. This will be up for the next three months of the budget process. So you don't have to be at tonight's meeting. You didn't have the content as you've got, you've got, uh, through the entire budget time to go on this website and comment about issues that the public wants um, the commission and staff to look at for the upcoming budget. As I said, there's the sites and we'll have those advertised on our Facebook page with the link so it's real easy. You don't have to go through all those instructions. You can just hit the link on it. Also on there, you can get a copy of the entire budget draft as it stands now. So you can see where we are now. Again, we're in the beginning parts of the budget. So there's lots of things that are gonna be added, moved around and stuff, but you can look at the actual budget as we, has, as we have it now um, on that website. So those two things are available to have public participation throughout the whole process. And just to go over a little basics and stuff, I'll turn it over to Ron to, to continue with just some, some basics of the budget and what we're gonna be looking at over the next series of months. Okay, good evening, Mayor Commissioners, Ron Herring, Finance Director. And I just wanna say, like the city manager said, we have the budget on the city website under the documents and the document library. Um, that's, we call it the more detailed budget. It has all the line items, but we're also got the other ones ready, what we call the executive summary. It's all completed. It will should be on there tomorrow morning. A lot of good information on the summary, executive summary with four years of data, millage rates, history, debt, everything at CIP. So that there'll be two budget documents out there. Um, the one now and the one that's gonna be there tomorrow. But um, As the city manager was saying back on March 14th, the, uh, we had the referendum on the, um, um, referendum number two, which the city manager already explained, which passed by 88%, which was, you know, conduct a public hearing, which is tonight at the beginning of each budget cycle, but no later than June 30th to, to obtain public input tonight. The other thing that was on, on the referendum was uh, number three, referendum number three, what doing with a strategic plan to review and update every three years of fiscal strategic plan beginning for October 1st, 2023. 
um, shall be implemented and ut utilized for creating city policy, budgeting, capital project planning consistent with its mission statement and core values. You know, both of these items, you know, interrelate with the budget process. Um, just a little overview of the strategic plan. The, the main areas are, the, you know, with the mission, the vision, the core values, uh, the goals, which are the infrastructure, community engagement, quality of life, cultural heritage preservation, smart growth redevelopment, and uh, good governance. And then highlighted in the bottom is uh, goal F2, objective one, which is to ut utilize a strategic plan as a tool to prioritize budgeting, annual and long-range capital expenditures. That's What we've been doing so far, really the budget process for us started in February with the, with the finance department getting ready in March, the departments keyed in their budgets, and in May we're getting ready, ready getting the budget book put together. And um, here we are tonight. We have all the funds have been balanced, general fund balance with no use of unassigned fund balance. That's basically the unrestricted reserves in the general fund. And Budget Advisory Committee is meeting with the departments on their budgets. They did one meeting last Thursday. They've got one this Thursday and one on uh, June 15th, meeting with the departments. This, the budget timeline going forward, of course, tonight is a public hearing. We've got the budget workshops with the boards on July 12th, July 18th, July 27th, and then August 3rd if needed. And then uh, September 6th is the first public hearing on a tentative millage rate and tentative budget. And then September 20th is scheduled for the second and final public hearing on the millage rate and budget. And then October 1st, 2023 is the beginning of the fiscal year for 2024. Just to show you where we are in the budget right now, I mean, it's gonna change. This is the first go around with the budget, but we have a budget so far in total of 80,985,240 bucks. Amazing. The revenue is broken out by categories, taxes 28%, permits and fees 5%, intergovernmental 10%, charges for services 43%, fines and forfeitures, interest 1%, miscellaneous 1%, and then transfers, reserves, internal services for 12%. And then on the other side of the revenues, we got just a graph on the expenditures for the total city. Uh, general government, 13%, public safety, 26%, physical environment, 37%, transportation, 4%, uh, economic environment, 1%, cultural recreation, 10%, transfers, 4%, and then non-operating debt, internal service fees, 5%. And with that, that's my last slide. I guess we'll open it up to Whatever questions or going into public comment. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do now is uh, these were uh, the staff presentations, and um, we're going to go ahead and open it up to public comment. So if there's anyone here um, that wishes to uh, provide their thoughts, observations. Um, what they would like to see that the city focuses on on this next um, upcoming year with regard to the budget. If you please step forward. Um, you'll have uh, four minutes and if you wish to um, have an additional two minutes, if there's someone that's here that would uh, give up their time, uh, you can ask him, and I just need to have their name to do that. Good evening, Mr. Janeskis. Good evening. Mark Janeskis, 487 Riverside Drive. And uh, I'm here to make a comment about the parks and recreation. I see that the allocated budget is approximately $8 million of the total $80 million. And I would ask to make a request for consideration uh, for pickleball. That's my hot topic uh, because of the growing sport and what I think it'll enhance our uh, green space that we already have. Also not for selfish uh, motivation, but also I think it could be if it's done right and planned right, it could be a uh, revenue source for our city. So uh, there's more of a uh, pickleball players. It's Tuesday night. Uh, they're at the rec center playing pickleball they didn't want to give up that time to come and uh, you know make their comments they said you do it and so we, we actually planned it that way so, <laughs> uh, so uh, 
that's my main uh, objective here is to get that out so um, we can uh, have some talk and discussion and planning on that and get the community involved in that. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, pickleball is a high priority. Um, I mean, we've had discussions about that. It, it's just a matter of getting it done and, uh, like you said, doing it right so it integrates with everything else that we're, we're doing so we don't put pickleball somewhere and then a year later we realize that we should have just put it a little bit over this way or this way or a different location. So. I don't know if you've got any new information that you want to share. Just uh, watch the agendas. Probably, maybe in two or three meetings, we'll be put. We've, we're working right now to put together some different options. Uh, we've been work. We worked with another member of the audience on one option. There are other options we use. So we're hoping to bring back. It'll probably be one of the July meetings. Um, you know, before we get. You know before we get too far into things, to look at some options and see if the commission can agree to some locations um, that would be favorable. And then obviously when we know the location, we can put the cost behind it. We've already got some money budgeted. It depends on the location. If we'll need some others from this budget, which will still be available because we want to do this while we're still in the budget process, that decision can be made. So watch the July agendas. One of them, they'll, they'll probably be the item of some of the different sites that we have of the possibility of pickleball and we invite you for you know and, and your group to come and view and make your comments to us wonderful wonderful the comment though talking about being cost effective i understand that uh, the uh, riverside tennis complex is going to be completely renovated in the next two to three months and uh, i ask about getting pickleball lined once that project's completed I was told that that contract's already out the bid and not able to do so. Um, a recommendation would be to do a uh, addendum to the back end of the contract, maybe to line those courts for pickleball use. Very cost effective. We're looking at maybe $250 per court, $1,000 to immediately get uh, four pickleball courts for our community and then move on, you know, in 24 for development of a you know specific pickleball. So I just throw that out there too. Yes, and I don't think the timing, like everything else, the timing is probably gonna be behind on that. So we may have some time to do that. So, so we'll look at that. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Janoskis. Evening board, Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. There's a few things I want to see what you have in the uh, budget this year, especially um, the pickleball courts. Everyone wants them. Please do it. Don't make them a deal. Pickle court, not having them. It's very important in this community to everybody health wise. I'm here to speak on historic preservation. I'm looking at what you've got culture and recreation. Please keep in your budget in mind we must maintain the cultural buildings that we have in our community. Two years ago our old city hall was terrible. We had to fight to get it uh, taken care of and we had to fight to have it restoration done. Please do not forget the Safford House and hopefully we can eventually move it to the bayou we have a great community here, not only the Greek culture here, but an old town. And we can have a beautiful historic old town that people are going this summer driving to see all the historic venues within the South and in the United States. We could have the greatest community here. Unbelievable what the plan could be with the historic avenues we have here in this community. We also have to maintain Craig Park inside with the trees, the shrubbery, the uh, shuffleboard, and our tennis courts, very important. And our trees there, we have to take care of those older trees. Thank you for the signs that the city did put up, but people are still swinging on the, the limbs and they're still climbing the trees. We need to have something done to make sure we preserve all of that. 
our roads. Our roads, you go down Canal Street, they're dipping again bad. The pipes are, are sinking down. Go out towards uh, Florida Avenue, the skirts on the side of the road, the ruts, people are tearing up their tires. We need to maintain the roads in this community. We need to ma maintain good water lines and we need to take care of the sewer lines in this community. We see the damage that it's doing. Someone's not watching the roads and these areas and the potholes and the sewer entrances to this community. Take a ride around and see what's happening. Um, but the main thing for me is historic preservation in this community and taking care of what we've got so we don't lose it and probably, hopefully, can buy lots to move old houses, historic houses that have history here in Tarpon Springs. That is our legacy, and that's what we're here for. And I want to thank the board two weeks ago for saving a house, changing the uh, roof down in the fruit section. What the mayor said is right. We whittle away, we whittle away, and we lose everything we've got. And it's so important for Tarpon. And our library, we still, even though there's renovation going on, we still have to take care of our library. We still have to make sure that it's preserved because we've worked too hard to raise money and build the library and make it good for this community. These are things that are here all the time that must be taken care of. The new things that you want to put in the budget, see if we can support them for you, but mainly our historic preservation in Tarpon Springs. Buying property for parking lots downtown instead of a high-rise uh, parking facility. There's some good lots on the trail that's walking distance to downtown Tarpon. We need to do a program like they do in other communities. They buy these lots, make parking lots, and the communities use the big um, golf carts to transport citizens back and forth who want to come to Tarpon Springs. We need to look at that. Yes, we do have the trolley, but it doesn't do what these other programs do. We have so much to do to make Tarpon such a magnificent place to come and visit. And uh, I would like to see our com commission look into these issues and do something to keep Tarpon alive. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Maggie Miles, 433 Sporia Street. Um, when I'm looking at the budget, uh, I would like to see something regarding um, Juneteenth for next year. I know this year you said there'll be a proclamation, but I think we have enough time now to plan for next year um, that Juneteenth could be a um, holiday for Pinellas County, I mean, for Tarpon Springs um, government. Um, also, looking at transportation, um, some work around the um, Belcher distant extension, opening that up, what can be done um, in the budget, what can be done to um, move that along if we um, need consultants or more studies or um, surveys, whatever we need. Um, and then, um, although I would like to see a pickleball, I want to know whatever happened to a pool coming to Tarpon. Tarpon's the only city that doesn't, Dunedin has a pool, Palm Harbor has a pool, Ozmar has a pool, everybody has a pool except Tarpon Springs. We don't have a pool. So if our kids need swimming lessons, those that are not fortunate to have pools in their backyards, um, do they go to the beach or do they have to go to the Y in Palm Harbor or Trinity um, where they can get lessons there at a cost or sometimes free. So although, you know, I'm glad about the pickleball, you know, but we've been talking about a pool since, since I was small, and we still haven't gotten a pool in Tarpon. So those are my three things. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Morris. Good afternoon. Good evening. Katie Taylor, um, 1991 Douglas Lane in Tarpon Springs. I wanted to um, say thank you for uh, updating the street location at line and distance. Thank you for moving the stop signs closer to the, to the street. It cut down on some of the hazard. 
but I was going to ask also now if you can put a flashing uh, caution sign on uh, Distance Avenue going north right at the crest of that hill because people that's coming off um, MLK going north on, on uh, Distance Avenue, when they get to the corner of line and distance, when you get over that crest of the hill, it's not enough time to stop if somebody pull out in front of you. So the people that's going north on distance need to be told to slow down. I put a speed limit sign right there at the crest of the hill. But I thank you for at least putting the stop signs closer to the, to the um, street so that people can stop closer to see over that hill traffic coming. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Thank you. Uh, we'll probably look at the flashing sign, the flashing light. The city manager is saying he'll take a look at that with the police department. Thank you. Hi, good evening. David Ballard Geddes, Jr. I live on Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. With a proposed budget also comes a proposed tax burden. The budget is just another way of expressing a tax burden or a debt formulation to support a future increase in costs and subsequent taxes to maintain the budget. Quite frequently, debt formulation, such as the national debt, is used to pay a bond yield or dividends to support the interest rates to a bond. Such payout is recognized in statute 218.415 section 16F as security to pay obligations to bonds. Such taxes are used as liquidity. Point of order, Mayor. Uh, don't these comments have to pertain to our budget? I think he's saying that it does pertain to the budget. It's related to taxation. This evening is for the residents to express here, what they're, here. go ahead. I, I do speak from a, a legislated level in, in some regards as it relates to uh, city uh, um, budgeting as well. Um, back to statute 218.415 section 16F. Uh, such taxes are seen as liquidity to pay interest rates, both rated and unrated bond revenue, again, seen in that statute referenced on my, my um, envelope here. I ask, at what point, when does the civilian population, due to clean across the board inflation coupled with the devaluing of the U.S. dollar, adding in the everyday rising costs of our vital water supply, our necessary electric, gasoline increases, factoring in the lack of adequate job opportunities to support the population. At what point does the civilian population financially collapse and can no longer bear the burden of everyday expenses as well as taxes that are being imposed against us. Another way of perceiving the budget is uh, to view it as a public debt of such. At what point does legislation begin to tax us directly and directly tax us as enumerated from Article I, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution and levied directly into the equity of our homes, levying the equity out of our homes claimed as process due in the 14th Amendment. Again, thumbing us under Chapter 159 of the Florida State Statutes. Federalist Paper Number 9 claims such legislative process as a factious process as contrived as a malicious disorder within the uh, in, inner workings of government. Um, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Geddes. I, I think the point that Mr. Geddes is trying to make, tonight's a, a budget hearing for residents to express what they'd like to see, but also what things that they may wish to object to, such as taxation. And I think Mr. Geddes is making a point that he's objecting to the taxation. Some people may get up this evening and say that they want a lower millage rate. Mr. Geddes is simply objecting to taxation and when are, is all this gonna stop and, and a continued increase in what our budget is every year. Thank you. As it relates to the, the pie chart, um, I, I do not see a, a bond uh, yield or a, a bond um, 
you know, slice of the pie, so to speak, in servicing bond debt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Geddes. Next uh, comment, please. Good evening, Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. Not being able to have seen the uh, budget online, I can't really comment on specifics. Uh, there is a couple of things that I would like to follow up on what some of the other speakers have said. But first, specifically, as a budgetary item, it's time to raise the salaries for the Board of Commissioners. I'm going to put it out here now. $8,000 a year is not going to attract new talent. Nothing personal, but what it relies on is people who either are independently wealthy or have their own businesses or have some other income and can maybe contribute some of their spare time. So even if you raise it to 1000 a month for the commissioners, that's 4000 each one. And just to do the same for the mayor, 4000 times 5 is 20000 bucks. You're currently budgeted 45000 for it. 20000 bucks extra is not going to kill you. It makes it 1000 bucks each. Mayor gets 17 We move on from there. On the pie chart here where it says economic environment, I'm not sure if that means economic development or economic development and the environment, but... Uh, we need to see uh, some sort of commitment to a revenue stream for us to acquire properties within the city. And I'm not specifically talking about the one everybody knows me about, but the Roosevelt thing, the Kokoros thing, any, and the Ross thing that we agreed upon. These are properties all around that we have potentials uh, to acquire over a period of time, so we need to commit funds to that. Uh, transportation. I'm sure some of y'all have felt the effect of MLK being partially closed. Thankfully, we have mirrors. We can go out and come around. But as the two ladies said, distant, where is it? We had a meeting at Mount Moriah, what, about eight months, a year ago. We had the consultants. We did the public input, but we haven't seen nothing what's happening since. We gave you ideas about three. There were three types. We gave you feedback. Drain. Now, also, the reason I brought up MLK closed, you have to go to Mears, or maybe depending on where on 19, you have to go to all the way up to Tarpon Avenue or... Uh, Lemon Street or Lime. Lime. I believe the lady here mentioned Lime Street uh, at a couple meetings ago about opening it up. That, when I go north or east, I turn at Safford, go up Lime, there's a few stop signs, past the post office, you're at Publix. Very convenient thoroughfare, but that trail blocks it. And I have to say, Mayor, that was not proper to say that the resident had to contact the county to find out what to do about it. The board needs to come together and say, hey, this is a vital thoroughfare. Let's send a letter to the county, have staff look at it. What can we do to open it up? That's what a board does to respond to their citizens. So what I would like to reiterate is let's get on the move with Distin and also have the staff look into contacting the county about opening up Lyme and Safford. Because, actually, it would work good because you can put a stop sign there because MLK and Lemon, there ain't no stop signs. You got three mm -hmm. on the south side of Safford. You got the Lincoln, you got Morgan. In fact, you could get rid of Morgan, actually, and create that one straight and just make the stop sign at Banana there. So, or no, that's Morgan on Safford. So those are two things in that regard. Ms. Samarka said she would donate two additional minutes for me. Okay. Um, revenues. We look at what we have currently as revenues. You heard the gentleman speaking about pickleball. Mark, please, please, 
please, you and Paul, go and dig out those records for the sport complex. I drive by on mirrors, big piles of mulch and trees. That processing operation can be moved somewhere on the north side of the river. That's where your sports complex is. You put in the pool. You put in pickleball courts. You put in some fields. Ms. Fadalitas had come here before, and I mentioned it at that time, about lacrosse and other sports that we're getting into. Mr. Kuskudis came one time, talked about softball and all these tournaments they go to. There's new revenue stream if you take advantage of it, and then you satisfy the needs of your residents. There are options. There are options. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Koulianis. Yep. Okay. It's okay. Good evening, Tom Cooliano, 1250 South Pinellas Avenue. Uh, Mr. Herring, let me, when is, how often does the city do a fee study or a increase of the fees based on the current costs? And I'm sorry if I, That's okay. am I allowed I, to address I, him? I'm assuming you're directing the question to me and then Mr. Herring is yes. listening to it and we're good, thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Herring. Well, we do a, a revenue sufficiency study for the water and sewer fund, and we do from, for the stormwater fund. Okay, well, I, I had 21 years of experience dealing with permit fees with the Environmental Protection Commission in Hillsborough County. And uh, after a while, you'd be surprised how far behind you are on permit fees. And the Hillsborough County, uh, the commissioners were strong believers in that if you're going to benefit because you need a permit to build a development or a rezoning, the general taxpayer should not be paying for that. We did have a, sorry to mean to interrupt. No, we did that's have okay. A, for the building permit fees, I think for the first time in a while, we did have an increase in our fees. I think it was about, a, went into effect, uh, I don't know if it was quite a year ago. So we did have uh -huh. a study on that, and which, were, which increased the fees. And how about for planning and zoning and all those others? Um, not, not one for those recently. So okay. Well, I, I would those recommend are, those are smaller that as a, revenues, as a revenue source. Those are smaller revenues. Because right. people are definitely benefiting from that service that we provide. Right. And it shouldn't be paid for by the general taxpayer, right. in my opinion. Right. Uh, secondly, I understand just from seeing, I didn't see the budget online, but there is a definite uh, increase in additional revenue because of assessments, assessed values going up. Right, the taxable okay. value assessments, yes. Okay, we also dealt with that and we learned a hard lesson that when you take money that's gifted to you like that and you use it for recurring expenses like hiring personnel, uh, when the hard times come, you got to wind up getting rid of those people and more. Okay. So. When you're, when you're gifted with sometimes one-time money, you use it for things like a Kokoris Park, one-time expenses, not recurring expenses. And another thing, going off of Mr. Delacus offering you guys a raise, I think it would be nice if you gave pensions to former mayors. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and one other serious issue is, I don't know how many positions uh, Mr. Young has opened in the police department, but I would urge you to fill his vacant positions because you can have all the beautiful historic buildings you want, but unless we have a better quality of life from the law enforcement side, that doesn't do you much good. And I'm talking about like mirrors, the stop signs, and those things. And uh, I just urge you to give him the positions he needs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Koulianos. Uh, just so everybody's information, uh, our rules of procedure um, states that comments made by residents should be directed to the commission and um, questions would be directed to me. Tonight's a special session. Um, we, on a format like we're having tonight, it really should be a work session, but our rules don't allow 
resident comment during work session. So there's a little bit of liberty being taken here. I've known Mr. Koulianis for a very long time. He's a former mayor. And so I, I understood what he was trying to get at. So I just wanted to make sure I, I understand what the rules are. But in this particular evening, I'm just making it a little easier for people. So are there any other public comments? Good evening, Ms. McKinney. Hi, Debbie McKinney, 1021 Rose Tree Lane. Um, I just, I don't, I know my own family budget. I don't know anything about city budgets, <laughs> but doing my own budget, I always protect what's most important to me. And so right now what's important to me is to make sure that the schools continue to get their SROs and the extra police officers while they're starting up school, while the crazy parents are dropping off and keeping peace at the schools. And um, also what's dear to me is how much I'm paying taxes. We've all been hit with really high insurance, flood insurance, homeowners insurance, everything has gone up, car insurance. Duke Energy screwed a lot of us with their budget plan and my bill went from 296 to five something and so i'm what's important to me is yes i want to take care of everything that we can but to try to not to burden us with more thank you Ms. mckinney um a couple of people mentioned the uh, police department tonight public safety in um october September 30th ends the uh, three-year contract that we have in place right now. A new contract will be proposed um, as part of this budget process beginning October 1st. That includes the SROs and, and also the comments made by Mr. Koulianis concerning the police department. I know the commission is very sensitive to making sure that we've got an excellent, which we already have, and keeping it that way, an outstanding police department. So um, are there any other public comments? Hi, Elias Garnica, Uskatagi, 1482 Hillview Lane. Um, we heard about it needing to increase the commissioner salaries, which I definitely agree. It's a huge barrier to entry. The time commitment involved with how little the payout is, it's just a matter of practicality and understanding that um, people need to pay their bills. Uh, I, I'd like to extend that and go also, we need more paid staff uh, for the train depot, the Heritage Museum, and the Safford House. It shouldn't be so dependent on volunteer efforts. Um, historical preservation is skilled work, uh, and we should be excited and wanting to hire people who are trained in this kind of stuff in order to you know, manage our archives and manage our buildings. Uh, if you think about it, like when Mayor Safford lived in that house, how many people were tasked managing the estate, just managing the house? If uh, they paid people then, presumably, to take care of the building, we should probably have at least a few people taking care of it and the grounds around it, not as, um, just as like their role. Um, where it can be like this is a caretaker of the building. And it's the same thing with the depot. There have been like some part-time, like the best wage you can get at the train depot is a part-time job and it really shouldn't be like that. It's one of our like most intact historical resources in terms of its context and like the inside. Um, it would be great if we could, you know, sell copies of our old maps or recreations of uh, historical objects, but instead we have a museum that's run by volunteers that sometimes don't know the area, aren't connected, don't know the history because they're not, why should they be? It's, it's difficult work and um, if we're gonna really care about our, the enduring cultural legacy and history of the town, we need to make sure that we have the skills and resources to back that up instead of relying on the idea that people will continue to do it for free in perpetuity. Um, things are only gonna get harder as time goes on in terms of historical preservation because that's just how information dissipates. Um, and we should be 
like having someone to manage interns, you know, from the universities, um, to be doing work at our buildings. Um, that's the kind of thing we should be looking towards, at least I think. Um, I just really would appreciate if there were more pay, like there was more wages dedicated to this kind of thing uh, so that people are incentivized to stay or uh, invest in their community in that kind of historical knowledge. Because um, it's one thing to give it from one person to another it's uh, another thing to give it to everyone who comes to Tarpon Springs. And that level of communication isn't something that comes naturally. People go to school for this kind of thing. People get like master's degrees. And um, those people can't use that education for free. Um, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Elias. Are there other public comments? <coughs> Hi, Ms. Miles, you can't. Not, I, I've got to draw the line somewhere this evening, but um, thank you. Okay. Are there any uh, other public comments? Um, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? Uh, let me ha hang on. Um, unless the commission wishes to ra waive the rules and allow Ms. Miles to come forward again, I don't have any objection to that. The rules are the rules. I don't rules. have an objection to that. Okay. Leave it as it is. Okay. Oh, no, it, it's okay for Ms. Miles to come forward. Please come forward, Ms. Miles. <clears throat> 433 East Boyer Street. I'm sorry. Um, I have a dear friend, um, um, Greek lady named Mary, that I give a ride to often. And I gave her a ride today to Publix, and uh, she was quite upset because they had just went up on her rent for $100. And she lives in the senior apartments off MLK. And I know this is a, like a countywide problem. Um, if it's not a housing authority, even though it says low income housing or affordable housing, they're raising the rent. And these people only get a certain amount of money. And I'm not sure what this commission can do, whether they can take this conversation up to county government, but she was pretty upset today, which upset me because she said it they just went up on her rent for $100 and she was gonna to have to try to get help from her daughter to start help paying her rent. So if it's a housing authority, I think it's strictly based on your income and it stays at a manageable level. But this new affordable housing that we're seeing now, um, they're going up on the rent and we're seeing some of the results in our homeless people that we're seeing in the area and I'm quite sure um, um, Chief Young is seeing an increase and um, homelessness around here. And so I told her I would bring it up tonight and I forgot. And so Mary, yeah, I, I said what I was gonna say to the commission. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Miles. <laughs> I knew I was gonna open the door. Is there any objection for Mr. Delacus to get back up? He's already spoken six minutes, so. He, he gets 30 seconds. I'll, I'll be quick. There's 40 lots for sale between uh, Distin and the new renovated Mango Circle. So that's, that's something to be looked at. And talking about historical things, I think it's time we honor Annie Dabbs and follow through on her vision to create a museum on that, sit, that property the city foreclosed <coughs> on, on Oakwood, what is it, Oakwood and Levis or Oakwood and Distin? She's got a Trevor Trove of historical stuff her daughter would be willing to donate. So put that on your capital improvement project list. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delacus. <laughs> Anita Pros, 901 Bayshore Drive. Former Commissioner Delacus keeps talking about the property uh, from Martin Luther King. Maybe the city manager can uh, elaborate on this. When I first became a commissioner and Charlie Barnes was city manager, we had thought of putting a recreation uh, unit there. But when the ground was tested, we were told no because of the gases coming up through the earth because they're evidently, I don't know, it may be in the records of the city, there were drums buried there. 
and other uh, uh, material buried there. So if you ever choose to do something there, be sure environmentally you have that ground tested because they said we couldn't build there because the children would get cancer. And that bothers me. And I think our mayor, being an engineer, he may know something about it too. So that's very important to take into consideration on that property. That's why they put the, um, the city refuge there that they collected because they knew at that time they couldn't build anything on that property. So please, the new commissioners that haven't lived here that long don't know about it, but you got to look into it. Thank you. Okay, let me go to remote access comments. Uh, Mr. Jump, are there any, uh, any, anybody wishing to make a comment by Zoom or telephone? Online would like to comment, please raise your hand. We will unmute the next Zoom attendee. Zoom attendee, you are unmuted. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Dawn Arbatello. I live at 1366 Cottage Grove Road. Um, I have been listening to all of the comments and I agree wholeheartedly that um, we have an amazing city with a terrific cultural history um, and uh, the importance of, of um, maintaining that and developing that is, is there. But I did want to um, read something very quickly about the, the um, the importance of defining a city identity, which um, as it pertains to the budget would probably entail putting together a committee or a group to um, kind of put all this information together. And I have more uh, detailed information, but I just wanted to read this paragraph real quick. Um, in an increasingly urban and economically integrated world, people and ideas move rapidly from location to location. City regions therefore should understand and communicate the core identity that lies behind their appeal. Along the way, they can recruit their residents and other stakeholders to be active champions and better leverage marketing resources. Cities that convey distinctive and differentiating character based on a coherent, genuine identity are more competitive and gain new opportunities once the world knows their story. I think we have a fantastic story and if we were able to uh, commission a group to create this cohesive identity for the city and incorporate that into the plans and everything that goes on in the city, we could really um, increase the appeal of all of our um, uh, good works that we're talking about, pickleballs and sports things and, you know, the traffic and everything that we do to improve this uh, community as well as promoting the uh, wonderful culture. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Wilcox, is there anyone else? We do not have any more raised hands at this time. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jacobs, we have one email. We do. This email is from Tina Bukovalis, 115 Athens Street. The Greek Town Preservation and Heritage Association applauds the city for funding the Greek Town Preservation and Placemaking Consultant this fiscal year. The consultant's team insights and recommendations combined with valuable input from the public will lay a strong foundation for the future of the Greektown Historic District. We now request your support in implementing enhancements targeted by the consultant. They will be crucial for preserving district historic and culture character, improving usability for residents and visitors, and creating more vibrant spaces that promote economic growth and local pride. To bring them to fruition, we request that the BOC allocate funding in the next fiscal year. Official recommendations will be available in the fall, but may include historically appropriate facade renovations along Dothanese Boulevard, public space enhancements, such as events, usage of Kokoris Park, landscaping, etc., emphasizing culture and history, elimination of sponge docks, assertions that limit spongers work area, improve walkability along south sidewalk on Dothan Canise, creating a brick paved pedestrian zone on Dothan Canise during part of the day via retractable bollards and retractable bollards. We are committed to working closely with the city throughout the implementation process. Our, our expertise and deep connection to the district combined with consultants' findings 
will ensure the enhancements align with preservation, best practices, and meet the needs of our community. Thank you, Ms. Jacobs. Um, I'm going to close the public comments now and go to um, commission comments. Uh, I'm going to ask whether any of the commissioners have any comments. Anyone wish to start? Go ahead. Is this on the budget? No this buttons. is on the budget, right? <laughs> no, I was going to talk about the Constitution. And, okay. And I, I can't, no, I'm talking about the budget. No offense, Mr. Geddes. We've got to do that. You know, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, they got to come, somehow loop back, you know. Um, you know, but the budget of any organization is, uh, defines it, their values. And you find you can tell a organization's values by what they include in their budget. Um, and I think all the things that were brought up tonight, whether pickleball or historic preservation, parking lots, Juneteenth for sure for 2024, um, and public pools, all those things are part of our values. Um, you know, we're, we are. Um, we still have to deal with uh, a balance. You know, we're not the federal government. We can't write checks to just cover um, what we want to spend. So, um, you know, we have to make those hard decisions. But I was happy with the items that were brought up tonight. I believe they express the values of our, of our town. And um, the only thing that I do oppose is raising commissioner salaries as some form of motivation to serve. Uh, I, I, first of all, you, you couldn't raise them high enough to give us minimum wage. <laughs> so, so given that you can't raise them high enough to, to cover uh, any reasonable amount for the time we, we put in, and, and I'm not trying to be a martyr, I just, it's just what it is, and I think that we don't want to motivate people by money. I think we should motivate them be, for public service, which I think is the highest calling. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Koulianos. Uh, Commissioner Koulianos, excuse me. Um, Ms. Jacobs, uh, we're going to go back to read one more email into the I record. I do. I apologize. I didn't see that there was another one sitting here on the dais. Um, this one was from Terry Malench. 1354 Shady Pine Way, apartment E1. <clears throat> There's a complete lack of public outdoor pickleball courts in Tarpon Springs. Players must travel to nearby cities to play on actual outdoor pickleball courts. There is an enormous amount of public information available regarding the popularity and high growth of pickleball all around the country. We need outdoor pickleball courts in Tarpon Springs so that our residents can enjoy the sport right here in our city with players traveling to nearby cities to play. Um, likely those cities are benefiting from money out our city. Residents spend while they're gas for car, pick up drinks for hydration, lunch after pickleball, money that could be spent in Tarpon Springs. Thank you, Terry Malench, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Thank you. Let's go back to uh, commissioner comments. You want me to? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to respond to some, first let me thank everybody for their comments. Um, I, I'd love to help and handle all of them. Um, I just don't want to extend and add to the millage rate. I heard what Ms. McKinney had to say. Um, some of us are better off than others, but we're all feeling the pinch of inflation. Uh, it's across the whole country. Um, there's not much we can do with that. Um, so we kind of have to just take it. We all know eggs are up, gas is up, everything is up, electricity. Um, I wanted to ask Ron if you wouldn't mind, ballpark, I'm not looking for exact numbers, how much of this $80 million is discretionary for spending other than like salaries? And you know that, because we have a set amount that we have. Do you have that number by any chance? No, I really don't have that number offhand. You know, you're talking personnel, then operating yeah. expenses and capital. and Because we're not really talking about that much discretionary money um, for the amount of items, you know, that we get to listen to. Um, I've been at a meeting where, uh, with, a, with a group of uh, politicians and 
Um, everybody, the, the question was which, which city has expendable money and nobody raised their hand. So we're all up here doing a juggling act of trying to help what's most important and what most people want. Um, and what's feasible to be done, because we also have to be prepared for the unknown, which is that H word that comes in and around this time of year. Um, so I, I did want to, I don't know if you had that at all. Well, not, I, I can give you the different categories of what makes up the expenditure budget, like 33 million of the total 80 million, 33.6 million is personnel services, 26 million is operating expenses, 14.3 million capital, debt 2.6 million, um, some grants and aids, uh, 158,000, transfers 2.7 million, and then some uh, internal service uh, reserves for internal service funds are 1.2 million. Now, I don't know if you're also talking about, you know, we do, you know, some of the funds have unassigned, unrestricted money in those funds, but we, you know, we try to keep those and not, not invade those monies, but. But most of our money is spoken for. In the budget, yes. yes. And that, that's the that point I'm trying to, yeah. I was trying to make. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, um, I think we're all, um, and I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I think we've heard enough on pickleball that we do all want it. It's just the, the place to put it. Um, so that's a big thing. I know I heard um, uh, potholes and wear marks. All those seem to be done on... Um, curves around, I, and I believe it's coming from boat trailers. Um, the boat trailers cannot stay in those lanes. They're, a lot of the lanes are tight, and they go off the road, and they make those ruts. Um, but as of lately, I, I've seen a number of areas where we've filled in, and I was pretty pleased with that. So um, I know somebody spoke on moving the Safford House. Um, <coughs> When you're fighting a budget like this, I am not in agreement to moving it. Um, I think it's in a good location. I, I know it could be in a better location for um, for people to see it, but it is it's not hidden, and I think it's safe. Um, I, I don't know if that's just the wisest uh, spendage of money, and what what I have more fear of is how it gets put back together. So. I don't know about that. I am for Juneteenth. Um, I, I would like to see something done with that. A pool, you know, I don't know. That's, that's a constant maintenance. Um, I don't want to really raise commission salaries per se as well. But what I would like to do is make sure that anybody that runs for commission um, should be an owner of a property that pays taxes in town. So. That's, that's my thinking. Um, I did bring up to the city manager about possibly revisiting charging outsiders to use our splash park or our uh, Sunset Beach and you know keeping it free for tarpon residents, but it gets used and abused and we have to pay to keep it clean for outsiders. And there, you know, there should be a charge as well as I don't think there should be a charge for us to use Fred Howard Park. So these are the things that I would like to see. And uh, with that, okay. I'll hand the mic back. On this side. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, we're just responding to some of the. <clears throat> in the well, first I want to ask Ron. Uh, Ron, this is really like the first year we've had the the grant specialist writer. Uh, is there some expected numbers that, from grant opportunities this year or this past year that could uh, reflect on the proposed budget? Well, I know she's working on it, but I don't think I have any final numbers I can give to you. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know she's hard We are hard very work. optimistic. It's just how much she's gonna get. She's gonna get a lot of grants, and again, that grant money puts money back in to use towards something else. Um, we don't know the number, but in this year and next year, I think you're going to see her bringing a lot and giving you the option of money back to place in other places where we might not be able to fund at the beginning of the budget, but during the course and getting those and freeing that money. Um, obviously, you know, it can be any time during the budget year. It can be January or anything. We've got a grant. We've got 
80,000 unobligated from the budget. What didn't we fund in this budget? The commission priority to put that towards. And I think from, from watching her so far, I think there's gonna be a lot of those opportunities in your next upcoming two years as commissioners uh, to be able to utilize. I'm very optimistic uh, from her work so far. That's awesome. I think you know, we can have budget resolutions as they come about to see where we can shift the money around. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, as we mentioned, the pickleball courts, they're coming. I, I spoke with the city manager recently. There, there's a couple uh, new locations that, that are going to come up and should be plenty of space to be able. Another issue is you don't want just two pickleball courts in one spot. We're, we're trying to find something where it could be three or four. That way you can have those tournament sized uh, events that you know are very popular uh, uh, among the pickleball community. Uh, I'm all for historic preservation. Miss Miles brought up. Uh, Juneteenth, I have no problem uh, looking into it and supporting it. Uh, the Belcher Distant Extension, I've gone on the record, I, I've opposed it before. There's a, there's a big minority community I am uh, concerned about, especially where the Cops and Kids Center is currently at and the amount of influx traffic that will go through the neighborhood. But uh, I'm looking to see how uh, the Cops and Kids Center does come along and, and see what it's going to look like to uh, help pull away some of those kids from that main thoroughfare uh, if uh, ever opened up in the future. But right now, I, uh, I have my reasons to not support it. And until I, I see some more people from the community on both sides want to support it, I would be then willing to consider it. As far as the pool, I mean, the pool's been talked about for many years. And I understand that, you know, an Olympic pool is costs a lot of money to maintain each year, but I, I would really like to see something, even a little one, something little possibly at the Cops and Kids Center for the kids to enjoy during the summertime and, and be able to swim. Because I, I've seen a couple pools in other cities and they're not Olympic pools, but uh, just something big enough to get those kids in, the, in those hot summer months uh, to cool off and enjoy themselves. As um, as some things were talked about for commissioner salaries, uh, you know, I could support it, but I can't support it while I'm in office. For me to <laughs> vote on something like that and then reap the benefits of it, I just couldn't do it. And, and to tell you the truth, it's, it ain't just the $8,000 we get a year. You know, I, I personally came on the health insurance and it, it's benefited me tremendously. So for me to, you know, sit there and act like it's just the $8,000 you receive it, Every year, it's not. There's a little bit more to it that really doesn't go into a uh, discussion. And uh, as one of the other commissioners said, it, it is a, a calling. And if you love town enough, uh, you, you'll find a way to get involved. So, um, but Miss uh, Leah, she did bring up some good points, and I'd like to see some. Uh, if, if I can't remember right, some of those buildings aren't open on the weekends the cultural centers and, and you know and maybe if we could shift some of those days or Monday Tuesday they're closed or at least have them open during the weekends during the, the tourism season uh, it'd be nice because I, I do see a lot of you know foot traffic around those areas and uh, I just want people to learn so much about our town as much as possible and uh, I'm gonna bring up some other things that you know I've talking with people in the community you guys are well aware that I've supported them and this may fall back to some working with some organizations like the merchants, like the chamber, or you know, having some city funded events. I, I really want to see the carnival or fair be brought back to this community once a year. I, I know there was some issues in the past, but it's, it's all about community involvement and support and uh, get, giving these young families an opportunity to have their kids uh, in an environment that's in a, a good area. So I, I'd really like to see that come back to town, whether it be in the downtown or the sponge docks um, I, I'd like for our city to start looking at a liquor license for the golf course there's a, a good opportunity there the golf course brings a lot of a lot of people in and it's it's expensive to, to go play around a golf and if you're golfing and, and there's some drinks there you're probably gonna pay twice as much as what you did for the golf course on drinks so um, that's something I'd like to consider or at least this board and do I see it happening this year? Not sure, but at, at some point we need to consider a, a new golf clubhouse that's, you know, includes a restaurant, bar, pub, or even, and a, a space or a venue so people could rent like some of these uh, rotary clubs. There's gotta be a nice place in town to possibly rent in the future. I know that's a big budget item, so 
Do I see it happening now? No, but uh, I just want to throw it out there and reach the true potential of our golf course. Uh, beer and wine sales at the, you know, all the Tarpon Springs public art events and shows. Uh, I want to enhance that environment a little bit with some beer and wine sales for the for the people that come watch these uh, plays and, and events. I think it'd be a nice enhancement to the experience and uh, try to improve and add sidewalk crossings at, at more intersections. We, we see that uh, the residents have getting have been vocal, and uh, we've seen certain intersections and in, in neighborhoods. Uh, been completed because of it and, it and it's not us we didn't do it it's simply the residents reaching out to our city staff to the city manager uh, our police department doing their work and, and coming back and getting it done so there are some intersections that we had no control of that the residents up actually helped push to get done and that's a, a lot of that stuff is in the the maintenance portion of, of our budget in which it can happen um oh we got to do something to help the building department possibly open up another position or adding someone else to there I, we've seen at times there, there's been a delay in the permit process for our building department and we need to try to help them out as much as we can um, that that would help with economic development and uh, business opportunity in the downtown and and the sponge docks and just all around town and uh, if we can help them out in any way possible i would really like to do something for that for that department. And uh, I've been a, a pet peeve about this one. I'd like to see a little bit more of a Christmas display around Craig Park, maybe some, some more icicle lights or something. I just think we have a, a great opportunity for our community to be a, a regional attraction in the Tampa Bay area during um, the Christmas season. And I'd like to see a little bit more to the, the Craig Park area if possible. And uh, the Cops and Kids Super Center, I want to, as we start budgeting, as the grant specialist starts working on it, I want to see what that's going to look like. Hopefully, we can maybe have some designs for a small pool in there too. So, and we do want to restore our, our shuffle boards and paint them and make them look sharp. They've, and we do want to restore our, our shuffle boards and paint them and make them look sharp. The city staff's done a great job to help <coughs> improve the drainage in that area. And uh, you know, if they're going to stay there, we need to enhance them and remind people of the historical spec. Uh, perspective of it uh, I've also talked with the city manager and this is I don't know how this could go this would have to be a discussion for the board uh, more transient boat slips in the sponge docks we are a hotel on the water uh, I've seen it personally I've seen and uh, we're part of this 600 mile uh, boat venture you know all around the you know all around the southeast and uh, we're one of the main hot spots so uh, I believe there could be some properties in which we could try to increase transient boat slips and have that hotel on the water experience. A, a lot of people, uh, tourists come to town that we don't even see or talk to and staff does a great job in welcoming them all. Um, hopefully at some point in the future we could talk about like a trolley or golf cart service to and from the downtown and sponge docks um, you know the, a lot of these things are our big budget items I'm not gonna say they're not but if you don't throw them out there at this time of the year at, at some point you know you, you hopefully you can get a, a couple of them each year and go from there and um, I'd also be willing to <clears throat> we need somewhat of a nightlife and I'm not talking you know a crazy nightlife but uh, I've also wanted to consider in certain areas, possibly putting the noise ordinance, uh, pushing it back to midnight in, in some of the busier parts of towns for something to consider. So those are just a, a couple thoughts and part of the process. And uh, I want to thank all the residents for their comments tonight. And um, hopefully we can work on uh, accomplishing most of the goals. Thank you. Vice Mayor Lowe. Uh, yeah. First of all, I want to thank the people that showed up tonight and uh, gave us a viewpoint on the budget. Um, and as well, the people that contribute to the Connect Tarpon uh, portion of this. Uh, this is a first for the city. This is the first time we've reached out to the public, to our residents, and asked them what they wanted in the city. Um, prior to us, kind of going through the whole budget process and saying here it is so this is a this is a good policy step we made i'm glad it made it past 
um, the vote into the charter. Um, I'm not going to go through a litany of what I see happening with the budget so far. I came here to listen to you, uh, not so much have you listened to me. Uh, pretty much everybody knows that I'm a uh, maintain what you have, improve what you have type of person. Um, so along those lines, that's always been my focus. That'll continue to be my focus. Um, as far as some of the other major things we talked about, like sports fields and buying properties and getting more green space for parks and so forth, um, that's something I think will come up during the process. We are not a very resident or per resident uh, in debt type of, type of a city. There's other cities with much more debt per resident than we have. We haven't taken a lot of bond infrastructure. We might have a discussion later on this year about how to do some of the bigger things uh, through bonds. I don't know. That's, we're going to have to see how that develops. But anyway, so it's the only way that we can approach doing big things. Um, with our current budget and the way it's growing and, and how we're growing and the infrastructure needs of the city as a basic whole, um, improving roads, improving the, the water pipes, improving the sewage, especially the storm water, et cetera, et cetera. We have a lot of plain maintenance and making life livable um, issues that the city needs to address from my perspective. So anyway, I want to thank you all for your input. Um, hopefully we can do this more often, but thank you. Um, similarly to Vice Mayor Luntz, uh, you know, my uh, personal thoughts as far as what I'd like to see will come later during the budget process, but honestly, that's going to be very little. Um, and also, I uh, want to mention with Commissioner Koulianis that I agree with him concerning the um, uh, commissioner salaries. I think everybody felt kind of the same way. Maybe um, just the sentiments across the board. I, I, I'm certainly for. I can tell you one thing. It take a lot more money to make my wife happy with the amount of time I spend here. So <laughs> I'm not even going to go there with that. I, um, I became. I, I wanted to be mayor because I wanted to um, kind of, in my opinion, put the city back on track. Uh, with regard to what the residents want rather than what individual commissioners are looking for. We're here to serve you. That's the purpose of this meeting tonight. That's the purpose of uh, the charter change. And the, the message here is 88% of the vote approved this charter amendment. They wanted to have, residents wanted to have a say up front. And um, as I mentioned to the city manager today, I was absolutely thrilled with the comments that we received online, um, not so much the number, but when you look at them, they're all consistent with, with the strategic plan, what the priorities are in that strategic plan. So we're listening, and residents are sharing their, their messages with us, and it's, you know, the, the good thing is it's all consistent um, with what the strategic plan says. And, and um, when I wanted to be mayor, the one thing that I felt was lacking was a process that we would go through that would be sensitive to the residents' needs to try and take a little bit of the, uh, um, what I refer to as hobby shopping off the table with, you know, little personal projects and things like that and focus on what the needs of the city are based on what the residents feel that the needs are. And um, that was why we established this the strategic plan. We've got the comp plan. The comprehensive plan tells us what the uh, deficiencies are in the city, such as pickleball courts. We don't have any um, mini parks. We're still deficient in those, and, and the mini park deficiency allows us to purchase property like a course park. Uh, but it doesn't prioritize those. Uh, the strategic plan actually goes through and prioritizes those and, um, and, and, and tells us what is important in terms of what the residents feel are important. And I think everything that's said tonight is, is great. It's not even an issue, but it, it has to be prioritized because there isn't enough money, uh, time or money, um, and some of it may not even 
pass the muster from a public safety perspective. Um, and so there's a whole lot of variables here that would have to be looked at. Um, we have um, it, it, the, the budget this year, uh, it, which uh, as Mr. Herring showed you is $80 million. That's, I'm not happy with that. Um, not happy with that at all. Uh, when I became commissioner um, in 2020, I think it was $65 million. That's what the budget was, right around $65 million. Um, that was, what, three, four years ago? Four years ago, and now it's $80 million. And I can assure you Mr. Herring's already figured out a way, and it's not because he's finding a way to spend the money. He still has to balance the budgets. There are still shortages. And I think um, Vice Mayor Lunt alluded to the fact that um, we're not a type of community that would go into debt. I think he's correct about that. There are some larger projects that we simply don't have enough money in a one or two year period to be able to do. And Commissioner Koulianis is working with the um, finance department to kind of come up with a, a, some kind of a game plan about how do we do these larger projects given the amount of money that we have available. And um, at some point, if, if you could meet with the city manager, maybe schedule uh, an agenda item to kind of go over how you're progressing in that, that would be very helpful, whether it's during the budget process or whether um, it's a separate reg during the regular session. That I think many people would like to. It's going to be the first, going first meeting in July. We'll be bringing that. We'll be coming to uh, forward okay. to you. Okay. All right. That's good. Uh, that, that's a regular session? Yes. Okay. Um, also, as far as the millage, I know Mr. Geddes is very big on taxes, and, and um, the, from a millage perspective, um, I looked at this last year, and I just want to, nothing has changed. We're still the lowest millage rate in the county for full service communities. Dunedin, Safety Harbor, Oldsmar has a lower millage rate, but they don't have a police department. Uh, we do. And um, that decision was made a long time ago, and I'm, I'm very happy with that decision and very proud of our police department. That's a part of Tarpon Springs. We're, in my opinion, one of the few, if not the only community that's independent, makes its own water, its own police department, its own fire department, has its own hospital, has its own four-year college. The list goes on and on and on. So we'd be, we should be very, very thankful for what we've got um, in that regard. A number of people have um, talked about extending the hours or maybe finding ways of, um, of um, allowing our facilities such as the Cultural Center, the, the uh, Safford House, also the Historical Society to open with longer hours. And that's very consistent with um, our, our departure from needs-based economic development, which is uh, building, bringing in more uh, development, um, more people would move into town. That's very consistent with a town that has room to expand. We don't have that. We're 90% we're built out and we're transitioning. We're not 100% there yet, but we're transitioning to asset-based where we're going to be relying on more visitors from outside of town to bring their money to town, spend it, and then at the end of the day or in, in a, after a couple of days they would go back home and those types of towns like ourselves that are built out, they're very historical, cultural, um, have got a lot to offer in that regard, and places to visit have been very, very successful. Uh, Newport, Rhode Island, Monterey, California. I mean, there's just the list goes, Salem, Massachusetts, um, uh, the, the list goes on. So eventually in the future, we will be one of those towns, and, and um, we do have a lot of history here and a lot of culture and a lot of diversity that people just enjoy. And, and quite frankly, we're just a regular good old hometown. I was looking at um, a Women's Day magazine article. I thought it was a recent one, but from 2018. And basically, it said towns that time has forgotten. And there were 20, I, I didn't know. I said, let me just go through there. And it was listing those towns that I just mentioned. But out of the 20 towns, it included Tarpon Springs. I was shocked. I didn't even know about that article. And so when I saw that, I said, wow. And, and um, I can't begin to tell you how many small towns there are like ours in, 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 uh, 
in the United States, but to have it highlighted by Women's Day magazine, which is not some small magazine, as, as a place that is just an exceptional place to visit, um, we should be, again, also very thankful um, that we have that, and we should preserve what we have, and I think that's what the residents have said with the strategic plan. I think the, um, the things that were mentioned this evening from the residents um, are certainly um, achievable. Um, I'm not gonna go over the pickleball courts again. You've heard enough about that this evening. Um, um, the facilities, uh, the one thing about Craig Park, I've mentioned this in the back, in, in the past, we really do need to have a master plan for Craig Park. Um, I, I had a visit by um, uh, a, a family that came in and, and uh, the, the lady, the wife, was um, a descendant of Dr. Belcher. And there was a tree in, in Craig Park that was uh, um, planted in memory of Dr. Belcher, and they couldn't find that tree. And I, I, I'm not sure where that tree would be, but uh, they kind of described the area. And I know we lost some trees in the past because of the storm. But if we had a master plan to be able to identify these things um, and identify their importance to the community, I, I think that would be very helpful in the future. Um, the Juneteenth, um, uh, we're definitely gonna have the proclamation. I think as far as the, uh, the holiday goes and the closing of City Hall, that's something that the, um, the commission's gonna have to discuss and, and the city manager's gonna have to discuss as well. There's some things that were said uh, by publicly about that in the past. <clears throat> the pool has a, a long history and um, I am just not really sure where we are on that and, and in terms of what the priority would be. The, um, the land preservation fund that we do have, um, I think you were mentioning, Mr. Delacus was mentioning a, a funding source for that. We should probably give that some thought as far as uh, we do have some money that goes into that already, um, but it, it's certainly, it's not enough. And, um, and I, I do know that we, we spent some of that on the, um, on the, on the uh, property on Florida yes. Avenue, is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So we are putting money away, but also spending it in, in uh, preservation as well. So that, I'm sure my comments are not helpful in terms of anything specific, but the point tonight was to get your input and um, not necessarily give you a decision tonight, but hopefully as, as the summer progresses and the budget evolves, um, you'll be able to monitor how things are going and, and you know who we are. Um, I hope we still have our business cards out in the lobby that you can pick those up. It's got our telephone numbers on it and feel free, whether you're here this evening or out uh, watching on television, give us a call. If there's something of specific interest to you, give us a call and ask us how it's going in terms of the budget. And uh, certainly if we don't, um, if none of the commission has an answer for you, uh, certainly um, we can get that answer for you and to have somebody contact you on that if, it, if that's the appropriate way to go about it. Um, that's all I have. Um, does anyone, let me make sure I've got. Yeah, uh, there, as I said, there's a number of projects that were kind of, um, they're gonna eat up some money and, and uh, the Gross Avenue, Seabreeze, uh, Bayshore Sewer. As time goes on and we haven't done those, those are, costing us more money, East Thorn Street uh, between uh, Alternate 19 and, and Ring Avenue. So there's a number of things we'll be addressing uh, this, this summer in terms of the budget that weren't even discussed tonight. But the purpose tonight was to hear from you. So I don't know if, um, if there's anything else from last call on the commission. Okay. Um, that's all I have, and I'm going to assume. Do you, do you have anything else, uh, staff, Chief Young, City Manager? Of course, you want to close this out, or I just want to encourage everybody. Again, the Connect Tarpman site will be open for your budget ideas. Keep submitting them. This is a good start, but uh, continue during June. Again, as you see in July, the it'll be the staff and the commission talking about the budget. So it'd be good to have all your thoughts in during June, but continue in July also. It's gonna be open, use it. Uh, it's very impressive, the start we had from the citizens being involved. 
Um, so continue that. We'll be monitoring it. We'll be getting it to the commission. We'll be updating them on all your ideas you add to it. So please continue that and continue the process of input to us so we can put together the best budget possible for you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Jacobs, do you have anything? I want to thank everybody for being here and anybody that's watching on television. I thank you for watching, taking the time to watch this as well. Meeting adjourned at 7.55. Ha, ha, ha.